Hello and welcome to Story Starters, a series of short creative writing videos for children. My name's Sue Palmer and I write children's fiction and if you've seen my books you'll know that my latest project is the Mays Moon Trilogy which tells the story of 13 year old Michael May's dream of becoming the first child astronaut. When I'm not here writing I run space and creative writing workshops for schools. And in these Story Starters videos, I'd like to share with you some of my writing tips, some of the methods I use for creating stories, and to show you how I develop my characters, a setting, a plot for my story, and the beginning of the story itself. So if you're a budding writer, if you'd like some inspiration, for schoolwork or a project you've got underway, or if you just want to join me for fun, then please stay tuned for the next Story Starter session. Today we're going to be looking at the first lines of your story and how to create a beginning that makes your reader want to carry on reading. And then I'm going to be sharing with you just a couple of the editing and writing tips that I use to help turn a good story into a better one and may help you with your writing. So when we go into a bookshop or a library or we look online, there tend to be three things that we consider. The first is the front cover. Does it interest us or intrigue us? Do we want to open the first page? The second would be the blurb. So a few sentences on the back of the book that tells us maybe what to expect in the story. And then the third would be opening the book and reading the first few lines. That's something I always do when I'm going to buy a book. So you need to make those first few lines as exciting as possible. Just have a think for a second about your favourite books. Maybe go and get a couple. Open them at the first page and just read the first few sentences. What do those sentences do? Do they excite you? Do they intrigue you? Do they shock you maybe? Do they make you laugh? So opening lines do a variety of things, but the one thing they all have in common is they make you want to read the next line and the next line. I'm going to show you a slide now of some very, very famous books and their first lines. And just for fun, see if you can work out which books these lines come from. And just to check to see whether you've got them right, here are the answers. One of my favourite stories is The Dark Wild by Piers Torday. And I just want to read to you the first sentence of the story and it's what made me want to read on. In the shadow of our apple tree, looking out across the river at a city full of glass and whispers, I take my dad's hand and watch our enemy fly towards us. So just in that one sentence, the word enemy suggests something frightening or scary. The word whispers suggests to me that this book is going to be full of secrets. And it's a story of a child and a father. And these are the first lines of my story, May's Moon, in which you get to find out about the setting in which the story takes place, you're straight into some action with the main character and you get a sense of how important, exciting and scary 
this moment is for Michael May. So your first lines create a really important impression. They may reveal a character's feelings. They may introduce you to a fantastical world in which your story is set. They may start the action. But whatever they do, they interest the reader from the start. So it's really important that you think about the content and the language that you're using. And Stephen King, a very famous author, wrote about opening lines. An opening line should invite the reader to start the story. And we're going to now look at how to create exciting opening lines. So how do we create a great start to our stories? One that will make the reader want to carry on reading? Well, there are a number of things you can try. The first is to start in the middle of action. Put your character in an interesting, challenging, unusual situation and start right there. The second would be to use some dialogue between two characters, revealing either their relationship or something that's going on, but straight into dialogue between characters. The third would be something like painting a vivid word picture of your setting. So if the world in which your story takes place is unusual, create an image in your reader's mind of that amazing world. Or you may want to set out the time and the place and the problem of your story right at the beginning. So if you followed the story starters videos on character, you know who your main protagonist is. If you've looked at the setting, you know the world in which your story takes place. And if you've got your plot plan, you know where the story starts and what are the obstacles in the way of your character achieving their goal. So if you've done those videos, if you've watched them and you have all of those things in place, why not take a few moments now to think of an exciting first line or first couple of lines of your story. If you haven't watched these videos and you want a bit of inspiration, then why not use one of these sentences and just see where it leads you. So congratulations, you've got the first lines of your story, which is brilliant. And knowing your character and the setting you've put your character in and created for them and having a plan for the rest of your plot, you can finish your story. But just before you submit it or hand it in at school or before you share it with the rest of your family and friends, there's one more thing I would suggest you do. One more thing that makes the difference between a good story and a great story. And that is editing. Now, it's a word that for most of us conjures up a feeling of extra work. It may be a bit boring, a bit time consuming, but it's well worth it. And for me, it's what turns this draft of a book into this. And for you, it's what will turn your good story into an even better story. So we're now going to look at just some top tips for editing your work to help it become the best story it can be. So editing for me is broken down into two distinct areas. One is to do with the writing itself. So my spelling, my grammar, my sentence structure, using correct paragraphs, etc. So I will look at every single word and make sure each word is the best word I can use in that sentence. 
to get across the message or the story point. And then I check my grammar for errors, and there are many. And then I will look at the overall presentation of my work and make sure it looks professional. The content is where I look at my character profile, my setting sheet and my plot plan to make sure my story works and that there are no mistakes where I've used the wrong language for the wrong character or the wrong expressions or the settings not quite correct. I just check that back against all of those documents. And if there are mistakes, I correct them. And if there's missing information, I go and find it. So for a story that you've made up with a lot of detail about your setting or your world, you may want to check that at the end and make sure it represents what you first thought. And once I've looked at the content and I've looked at the structure of my writing and I'm happy with those, that's when I send off my work to an editor or to an agent. And here's a list that you can use of some of the key areas that might help you edit your work. There's one more tip I'd like to share with you that's made a huge difference to my writing over the years. And that's the difference between telling your reader something and showing them. And if I use an example of a character I'm going to call Bob, and you tell me that Bob is sad in your writing, I've got an image of what that means, and it may be different to your image. But if you show me that Bob is not eating properly, that he's being snappy with his mother, that he's not returning his friend's calls, then my image of Bob is probably quite different. And it allows the reader to create their own individual picture of what's happening rather than telling them and feeding them that directly. So if you can have a go with your writing at trying to show somebody what someone is feeling or thinking rather than just telling them, it makes your writing richer and it makes it more appealing to the reader. Why not have a go yourself, just for a few minutes, at trying to come up with some sentences that show your reader what your character's thinking or feeling, rather than telling them, rather than describing the feeling. Show your reader through your character's actions and behaviour what they're thinking and feeling. It's quite a difficult thing to do, but it makes a big difference in your writing. So in today's video, we've looked at the first lines of your story and how to create a great beginning. And we've also looked at how to edit your story, to turn it from a good story into an even better one. And I've shared with you one of the things I find most useful when writing, which is to try and show my reader what the characters are feeling and thinking and doing rather than tell them. So the next step is for you to finish your story. Take whatever you need from these videos and from the stories you enjoy reading and come up with your best story possible. If you want to go back over the videos they are still available and if you need to download any of the materials you can go to my website on www.sypalmer.com So read a lot, write a lot and have fun and thank you so much for joining me in my Story Starters videos. Mm -hmm.